A flood watch for many counties in our viewing area. Coming up, what you can do to stay safe from floodwaters. Rain continues to fall this morning on live Doppler 13 radar still lit up with some scattered showers. This is going to come to an end. I'll have the details. Plus a big night in the Big Ten. The Hoosiers may be headed to Dayton early next week for the opening rounds of games of the NCAA tournament. We head to Chicago with Dave Calabro though where IU is out of the Big Ten and Purdue is moving on. Indiana's news leader, Eyewitness News Sunrise, starts now. And good Saturday morning, everyone. I'm Carrie Klein filling in for Naomi Peskovitz alongside Kelly Green. And we're going to take a look at this soggy forecast. Yes. When you look at that radar behind us, you mm -hmm. see a lot of green. But things are kind of moving out. Yes, things are definitely going to improve, but it has definitely been a soggy mm -hmm. 24 hours. And things will continue to taper off from the northwest to the southeast. As you can see from our satellite radar, the heavier rain has really started to thin out quite a bit. So we're still dealing with some pockets of rain across central Indiana, especially along I-70 and I-74 this morning. But we're also dealing with some dense fog right now. In fact, Indianapolis and portions in northwest Indiana under a dense fog advisory. This is in effect until 9 o'clock this morning, and that's because we're seeing reduced visibilities there as well as, of course, flood watches and some flood warnings along some of our rivers. And that is until further notice as we have a very saturated ground and really doesn't have anywhere to go to at this point. Here's a half a mile of visibility right now in Indianapolis, down to a quarter of a mile in Lafayette, as well as Crawfordsville, and uh, even below a tenth of a mile of visibility in Rensselaer, down to 75 hundredths of a mile in McCordsville, and a quarter of a mile in Frankfurt. So if you are heading out this morning, make sure you give yourself plenty of time, keep those low beams on, and keep plenty of distance from that car in front of you. It's currently 50 degrees in Muncie, 45 in Marion, 42 degrees in Lafayette, 50 in Greencastle, and 53 in Bloomington. Now here's a look at future track. Notice the rain pushes on out of here, likely by mid-morning, and really again, it will be from the northwest to the southeast, and temperatures will rebound nicely this afternoon, even above average, with highs in the upper 50s this afternoon, with mostly sunny skies later on today. So definitely a nice drying moving in with winds out of the northwest, a little bit breezy from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Even better for tomorrow. I'll have those details coming up in just a few minutes. Carrie? All right, Kelly, thank you. Well, Chopper 13 HD shows us flooding in southern Indiana that started even before yesterday's heavy rains moved in. This is just south of Jackson County, where the high water blocked one road and flooded some nearby fields, as you can see there. Well, Lawrence County Sheriff Mike Branham is worried about the flooding. He's telling drivers to take the extra time to drive around those floodwaters rather than risk going through it and getting stuck. Daryl Price knows just what to do. He says flooding has become an annual event in his home at his home in Bedford. It is already running over his driveway. It's washed out to where I'll have to repair it so and then drive back in there. Water is over the banks in Lawrence County, causing a level of concern that will continue throughout the weekend. And take a look at these tips to make sure you are safe from any flood water. Keep your storm water drainage lines clear. Work with neighbors to mow or trim back the trees or the shrubs and never attempt to cross a flooded road, even if it seems like that water is shallow. And this story is making a big impact on social media. The Walmart store on the south side of Muncie closed off the bathrooms after police found a mobile meth lab in the men's room. Now, a store security officer noticed a man acting suspiciously and called police. The man got away, but he left his backpack behind. And in it, they found chemicals and materials for making meth. The Delaware County Health Department ordered the bathrooms sealed off until they can be cleaned and decontaminated. The store is turning over surveillance video of that suspect to police. A month-long drug investigation led to four arrests in Miami County on felony charges. Police raided a home in Peru Thursday night and found meth, a meth lab, marijuana, and prescription drugs. They arrested all four people you see right there inside that home. 
Well, if the weather cooperates, a big I-65 construction project on the city south side will start tonight. Crews will begin shifting traffic, so work can begin Monday on adding lanes to the highway. Now, the nearly $36 million project will widen I-65 between Southport Road and the Main Street exit in Greenwood. Crews plan to work around the clock six days a week to complete that project by the end of November. Well, the excursion bus company has issued a statement concerning a crash earlier this week that injured 21 people, including the members of the Indiana Tech Collegiate Bowling Team that was headed to a competition in Tennessee. The company president said, quote, our thoughts and prayers go out to all of those involved. We are cooperating fully with the investigation. Three people are still in the hospital tonight, including the 76-year-old bus driver. The cause of that crash is still undetermined. And another accident, this one involving an Indigo bus, happened last night just before 6 o'clock. Now, no passengers were on the bus at the time, but it and a van collided on West 16th Street and North Capitol Avenue. The female passenger from that van was injured. No word on the details of her condition. And the train ride to Chicago has been extended now through April the 30th. The Amtrak Hoosier line from Indianapolis was scheduled to wrap up on April 1st, but the Federal Railroad Administration is now reconsidering NDOT's concerns about some new federal rules that, in effect, deem Indiana a rail carrier, although it doesn't own any tracks or trains. Well, the Indiana Hoosiers are back in Bloomington this morning for a nervous wait on Selection Sunday. Meantime, Purdue staying in Chicago today for the semifinals of that Big Ten tourney. Dave Calabro and Bob Kravitz have more this morning from the United Center. Hey, good morning, everybody. Dave Calabro with Bob Kravitz from WTHR.com. On a Saturday morning, the Purdue Boilermakers had a big matchup coming up later today, taking on the number one seed Wisconsin Badgers semifinal game. This should be a fun game, the way the Boilermakers are playing. It should be. I mean, they've played very, very well the last month of the season. But let's be honest, Wisconsin is one of the elite teams in the nation. It's a different level right it's now. It's a different. They're going up in weight class. They've <laughs> got they've got five, six, seven guys who can all dribble, shoot, pass, rebound. It's a, it's a tough matchup for anybody. But Purdue obviously having a nice run right here. Obviously, we think they're in the NCAA tournament. Be yeah, I don't have a good any, showing today, though. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think there's any question. Once they were able to get past Penn State, I think it got them out of the uh, situation where they might have to go to Dayton along with Indiana. That would have been interesting, Indiana <laughs> and Purdue at Dayton. So I, I feel pretty good about Purdue's chances. At least there's no chance that they'll suffer a bad loss. All right, let's talk about the Indiana Hoosiers. They go home with the 21 season, nine wins in the Big Ten. Now they just kind of watch and wait to see if they're going to get in. They do. I, I think the body of work suggests that they'll make it. I think they're probably going to have to be in the playing game in, in Dayton. But the one thing that I thought was sort of emboldening was that they played well here, and I think I felt like they started to rediscover themselves a little bit. All right, it should be fun Sunday night. See what happens to it here at the Chicago course with the Purdue Boilermakers. Catch our live coverage tonight at 6 o'clock. The Boilermakers, one win away. Hey, you never know. They might be able to pull this thing out, Kravitz. Yeah, I never Don't know. Don't be negative. I'm negative. Back to you guys in the studio. Enjoy your Saturday. Can't help it. <laughs> All right, guys. And a late night result from the ACC tournament. 11th ranked Notre Dame took on the number two team in the land, the Duke Blue Devils. And for the second time this season, the Irish upset the Blue Devils. And despite letting Duke's big man, Jaleel Okafor, pour in 28 points, the Irish held Duke in check from behind that three point line. And on the offensive end, Bonzi Colson gave them 17 points off the bench. Irish win 74 to 64. They play North Carolina in the ACC championship game tonight at 8.30. Well, taking a turn outside, do not write off your Saturday just right. because you're getting up and looking out and mm -hmm. seeing the rain right now. Absolutely. You know, Friday definitely was a very soggy mm -hmm. day. We're still seeing those lingering showers this morning, but the good news is this is going to clear on out of here, making way to a nice finish to your weekend. I'll have the details coming up in your SkyTrack 13 forecast. An amazing new video of that toddler being rescued from the overturned car in Utah. How officers were able to get her to safety. Plus, fighting fires and cancer. The effort to protect firefighters from what's emerged as an occupational hazard.
Breaking overnight, UNICEF has confirmed at least six deaths after tropical cyclone Pam ravaged homes in the Pacific Island nation of Vanuatu. Now, many residents stayed in shelters for the second night. Officials say power remains out this morning across the country and people on the outer islands have no access to running water or even outside communications and workers expect that death toll will climb. It was a quiet night in Ferguson, but there's still concern as police continue a manhunt for a suspect who shot two police officers. Protesters gathered outside in the rain last night. They continue to call for the mayor's job and a complete overhaul of the Ferguson Police Department. Now, the police chief has already resigned along with the city manager and four city employees after a Justice Department investigation revealed widespread racial bias. The wounded officers are back home this morning and expected to make a full recovery. A new video this morning from the rescue of a Utah toddler who was trapped upside down for 14 hours in a submerged car last week. And we now have body camera footage that shows that harrowing and amazing incident. Take a look at this. We see police, firefighters, and a fisherman working to flip that car over and then crews find a woman fatally injured and pull what seems to be a small, lifeless body out of the car. Here, pass her up, pass her up. Pass her up. Here, right here, right here. Go, 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 go. Come on, sweetie. Wow, now that video continues to show the crew giving the little girl Lily CPR in the back of an ambulance on the way to the hospital and miraculously. Just four days later, you know how this story ends. Lily is home. She's laughing and playing with her father in a very good shape. Well, the Los Angeles Police Department says 52% of runners in tomorrow's marathon will be first-timers, and that means they will also be, for the first time, dealing with record-breaking high temperatures for over 22 miles, and runners are looking for ways to stay cool. They'll be counting on the water at stations positioned all around the course, and L.A. natives are also pretty good at knowing where that shade will be. And a reminder, the 500 Festival Mini Marathon, just over two months away. WTHR is now the proud official broadcast partner of the race on May 2nd. To kick off that partnership, we're saving you $10 on your registration. Just use that promo code WTHR when you sign up online. I am jogging the race. Awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm excited about it, and I'm really excited that the weather's finally breaking so yes. I can train more outside. I mean, I was running in the right. snow, but I'd rather not you. if I don't have yes. to. It's a little dangerous mm -hmm. to be running in the snow, and I know you definitely want to have that impact of right. uh, the real experience. Yes. And finally, you're getting a break. Getting After this break. rain moves out, right? Yes, yes. I mean, and actually, we're going to be tracking a little bit cooler towards mm -hmm. the end of the work week, but over the next course of several days, we're going to actually be above average. In fact, the warmest day of the season, we're talking 70 degree weather, Carrie. Can you believe that? That might actually be a little too warm to take a jog in. Here's a look at our satellite radar that we have definitely been inundated with a lot of rain over the past 24 hours, and it has just been very steady as well. But it is starting to taper off, and if we take a little closer look here on our live Doppler radar, you can see it is just starting to thin out, and it's mainly hanging around the I-70 corridor at this point. If we zoom in a little closer, Still Indianapolis seeing some of that light rain at this hour, but it is going to improve as we head into the afternoon. Now, this is from our weather bug network. These are rainfall totals just since midnight. This doesn't include yesterday. So we've already had 300, 38 hundredths of an inch of rain in Seymour this morning, 34 hundredths of an inch in Nashville, almost a half an inch in Bloomington. So those areas still seeing some of that heavier rainfall, and we are going to be uh, seeing that taper off from the northwest to the southeast. Indianapolis right now at 50 degrees, and we still have a lot of those uh, heavier rain showers that are starting to taper off as well. But the foggy conditions will also be in place this morning, especially from northwest to southeast as that rain tapers off. A dense fog advisory in effect until 9 o'clock this morning. And of course, to our south, we have a flood watch. That is in effect until 2 o'clock this afternoon. That area has very saturated ground. We've had 1.5 to 2.5 inches of rain total since yesterday morning. We also have flood warnings in these lighter greens, and those are along the 
the rivers. So certainly going to see some minor flooding over the next 48 hours. Visibility is uh, also being reduced this morning, just down to a quarter of a mile in Lafayette and Crawfordsville and also Peru. If we zoom in here a little closer, McCordsville, just a half a mile and just a quarter of a mile in Frankfurt right now. So things are going to continue to really diminish before they improve a little bit later on this morning. It's still 50 degrees right now in Indianapolis, so very mild with winds out of the west southwest at six miles per hour and that rain will continue to taper off from northwest to southeast. We do have a dense fog advisory in effect. It will be drier this afternoon though and a nice finish to our weekend. In fact, we are also tracking the warmest air of the season to fall in our seven day forecast. Now here's a look at future track today. Notice that the rain will be out of here before 12 noon and we'll see temperatures climbing into the upper 50s and low 60s across southern Indiana. So this afternoon a much bigger improvement than where we were this morning. Temperatures will climb into the upper 50s, close to 60 degrees in some locations. And here's a look at your highs for today. Peru a little on the cooler side at 51, but still above average for this time of year. 58 in Greencastle, 60 in Rushville, 61 in North Vernon. Tonight, we'll see temperatures falling pretty quickly. The skies are going to clear out, and that will allow temperatures to fall to 30 degrees. A patchy frost will be possible tomorrow morning. And here's a look at your SkyTrack 13 forecast. High of 58 today, close to 60 tomorrow. Beautiful conditions. Check out Monday. I have 71 degrees. Cooler for St. Patrick's Day and much cooler as we head in towards the end of the work week where we are tracking chances of rain. Carrie? All right, Kelly, thank you. Well, fighting fires, obviously a very dangerous business, but did you know that firefighters have increased chances of getting multiple forms of cancer? Well, here's Eyewitness News reporter Jeremy Brilliant with the impact and some ways of reversing that trend. It's a typical day at IFD Station 29, but one firefighter is noticeably missing. But there is a hole here and that he isn't available, and we all know why, obviously. Joel Johnston, who has spent his career fighting fires at just 44 years old, is now fighting for his life. Diagnosed weeks ago with stage 4 cancer throughout his body. <coughs> so like and though he's never smoked shape. a cigarette, Mark wrapped his coughing. <coughs> Sorry. Because he's um, battling lung cancer. I, 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 there is no cure for this cancer. The best option I have is remission. The likely cause was the 10 days he spent in the pile at Ground Zero. As part of Indiana Task Force One, he was involved in recovery efforts after 9-11. Knowing what you know now, would you have gone? Absolutely. Would you have become a firefighter? Absolutely. Cancer has become an occupational hazard for those in the fire service. Right off the top of my head, I can think of six people I know right now, six firefighters I know right now that have some form of cancer. In fact, Captain Tim McDonald himself is a cancer survivor. The general population cancer rates are starting to go down. For firefighters, the cancer rates are going up. One possible cause, modern homes that are full of synthetic materials and become toxic when they burn. Didn't think of it. Truly did not think that I'd get cancer. And when I came on, you, you did suck a little smoke. I mean, they, you were taught that, hey, come on, kid, you got to save that air if you need it. You need to just take a couple breaths, get back in there, and let's do the job. You actually have to blow into it to, to activate the air to get it started. That was 35 years ago. Now firefighters have sophisticated self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBAs. They work if they're warned. The problem is many face. take them off. So Mark's message to firefighters is simple. It's time that we wear our SCBAs all the time. And his message to the rest of us? Enjoy life every day as your last. That's true. And this coming from a man who's already had yeah. one round oh, and starts his too. second round of chemotherapy tomorrow. Anything you do in life, you go at it with a positive attitude, and I think there's a better outcome for it. True if you're fighting fires or cancer. Jeremy Brilliant, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Today, hundreds of climbers will fight their way to the top of the Chase Bank Tower. That's 47 floors, or in case you're wondering, more than one thousand steps. Our participants can climb once, twice, even three times. The annual Fight for Air Climb supports the American Lung Association. Money raised today will help Hoosiers battling lung disease. That climb starts at 8 o'clock this morning and we're going to take you there live later on Sunrise.
Well, today is 314, which is the mathematical constant of pi and a good excuse to eat pi. Coming up, how students at one Indiana college are already celebrating. Plus, it was part of our community for more than 130 years. Up next, a look inside LSAIRS and how it's popping up again. Well, today is Pi Day, and students at one Indiana college are already celebrating. Members of the Tau Beta Pi Honor Society at Rose Hallman Institute of Technology have been writing a Pi number line all around the campus. They started at the math building, and they just wrote until they ran out of chalk. Just kind of gets people excited about math, and we're all engineering students or study math and science, so we all like math, and it's just a fun nerdy thing that we get to do each year. Oh, pi represents the ratio of a circle circumference to its diameter. It stretches to infinity, but it begins with 3.1415. And get this, today is the first time in 100 years that the date will be 3.1415. Well, two decades after LS Airs closed its doors downtown, its story comes to life today. The building, located at the corner of Washington and Meridian Streets, closed back in 1992. Well, the Indiana Historical Society published a book about the store and is now bringing it to life with a new exhibit, celebrating the former 134-year-old Indiana institution. The exhibit runs until August as part of the Indiana Historical Society's You Are There exhibit and we have much more about this including a look inside the old tea room all over on WTHR.com. Well coming up in the next half hour of Sunrise we're going to take you live to Comic Con where you'll find a lot of fans 
and a lot of celebrities. Find out who's coming to Indianapolis for the big weekend. Well, you're still waking up to rain this morning, but the good news is this is tapering off. It's just the backside of this system. Things will improve later on this afternoon and for the rest of your weekend. And we're even tracking 70 degree weather. I'll have those details coming up on Sunrise. Sunrise continues. Well, you take a look outside over downtown Indianapolis and you can see fog is going to be a problem throughout the morning. This is a live look and you can barely see some of the buildings there in the distance through all of that fog. Meteorologist Kelly Green joins us now. Kelly, we're crossing our fingers for this Saturday that not only the fog, but also the rain moves out. Is, yes. is the sun going to shine later? Yes, we Good. are going to see some sunshine. <laughs> yeah, it's been so soggy for yeah. the past 24 hours, really, but things are going to improve from the north west to the southeast good today news. and it's already starting to thin out quite a bit so that is definitely some good news because we are going to be dealing possibly with some flooding with some of this heavy rain that's passed over especially south central indiana and here's a look at our live doppler 13 radar you can see still a couple of pockets of heavier rainfall in northeastern indiana but we are definitely seeing things improving and thinning out but yes we are going to be dealing with some foggy conditions this morning and here's a look uh, from the national weather service that they have issued a dense fog advisory in effect until nine o'clock this morning and those areas definitely seen some foggy conditions and of course 
we've had the heavy rainfall and that has uh, put out a flood watch that's in effect until 2 o'clock this afternoon. We also have flood warnings along some of those rivers that tend to have some of that minor flooding. And visibility is being reduced to less than a quarter of a mile in Lafayette and Rensselaer, a half a mile of visibility in Crawfordsville, half a mile in McCordsville, a quarter of a mile of visibility in Frankfort. So definitely uh, give yourself plenty of time if you need to travel this morning because things are probably going to continue to get worse before they improve, especially as we head farther to the southeast once this rain starts to taper off. Currently 50 degrees in Indianapolis, 44 in Marion, 51 in Greensburg, 45 in Crawfordsville. Notice future track really ends the rain by late morning. So really going to see an improvement as we head into the afternoon. Drier air will start to move in. The winds will come out of the north. So that will definitely allow that drier air to help clear things out of the skies as well. So we'll see more sunshine this afternoon, as Carrie mentioned. Temperatures will climb into the upper 50s this afternoon, so definitely an improvement from yesterday. With highs around 58 degrees this afternoon, winds will be a little bit breezy at times. That will help uh, dry things out, so that's an improvement as well. But tomorrow, even better yet, all those details coming up in just a few minutes. Carrie. All right, Kelly, thank you. Well, the Fortville Police Department want to know if a power outage, a bank holdup, and a school bomb threat are all related. Here's the bank robbery suspect police are looking for. Now, they believe he is about 30 and around 6 feet tall. He has a black star tattooed on the top of his left hand with a Wrangler logo on his ball cap. At the time of the holdup at Greenfield Bank on Broadway, police were out in force about a mile and a half away at Mount Vernon High School. Now, 40 Five minutes before the bank robbery, someone called in a bomb threat to the school. It was evacuated, and six police agencies were all searching for a possible device around the school. Police want to know if that bomb threat was maybe a diversion called in to help out the bank robber. We don't get very many major incidents in Fortville. Uh, it's very unlikely that we would get two in one day, let alone two in 45 minutes. Um, there's the possibility uh, at this time we don't have any evidence to link the two. Now, no devices were found at the school. Police say there was also a power failure at Mount Vernon High School at about the same time, but that was due to a tree limb down online. Now, please call Fortville Police if you have any information on either of these two events. Well, a former Bloomington project manager pleaded guilty to federal fraud charges, admitting he took the city for more than $800,000. Investigators say Justin Wyckoff accepted kickbacks from a local concrete company after illegally funneling engineering business their way. Federal prosecutors announced the plea agreement yesterday afternoon. This is the second time in 10 months the United States Attorney's Office has come to the city of Bloomington to discuss a public corruption prosecution. One time is one time too many. Two times indicates an acute problem. Now also, prosecutors announced charges in a case we reported earlier this week. The former Bloomington Parks office manager is accused of stealing $430,000 from the City and Parks Foundation. Well, we are learning more this morning about a survival story that starts in Indiana and extends all the way to the East Coast. Police say a man called 911 in Lafayette to report a problem with his girlfriend in Brooklyn. They were having a FaceTime call when she started having trouble breathing and collapsed on the floor. Well, dispatchers in Lafayette relayed the medical emergency to firefighters in Brooklyn and then guided them to the correct apartment building. I knew it was important to get somebody there quickly because she was down. He watched her pass out while she was telling him that she couldn't breathe. So I knew that was crucial, like, okay, we have to try everything that we can, use our resources to get her help. Wow, what a scary situation. Well, the man's girlfriend was found unconscious and rushed to the hospital. Dispatchers say the distance covered in order to help the victim was challenging, but their teamwork paid off and did save her. Well, new Pete Pre-K classes are coming to Indianapolis Public Schools. You can fill out an application online beginning next Wednesday, March the 18th. Pre-K fairs will also take place that evening from 5 until 8 at Arsenal Tech High School. Seats for Pre-K classes will be filled by a lottery selection. So make sure your application is in before the April 10th deadline so you can get first choice.
Well, today, Speedway residents are encouraged to attend the annual State of the Town Address. It's taking place tonight at the Media Center at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You're going to hear an update on town legislation, financial status, and community events. The event will also feature an update on Project 100 at IMS, the 100 racing of the Indianapolis 500 for next year. That's all taking place this morning at 10 o'clock. And other big news coming from Speedway this week. There continues to be speculation that the Rolling Stones will play Indianapolis for the first time in 21 years. Several music websites say the group is close to announcing a 14-city North American tour that would include a July 4th concert at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Well, the at the RCA Dome. Mike Redman covered that concert for the former Indianapolis News. He says he'd love to see the legendary rock band play along with a lot of others at the iconic racetrack. Big concerts stink to begin with if you want to hear the music and outdoor big concerts stink the worst. But you don't go to these things for the music, you go for the experience. And so for the experience, this is a great place. Now, IMS President Doug Bowles would not confirm the news. He did, however, say they'd have to build staging to accommodate a concert of that size. But he also thinks the Speedway would be a great venue for a big concert. And a much different sight in downtown Indianapolis this weekend. Superheroes and other costume characters are all here for Comic-Con. Sunrise reporter Matt McCutcheon joins us now live from the Convention Center with more. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. You know, 20,000 people showed up last year for Comic-Con. And right here, sort of the calm before the storm, 250 different booths are all set up, different vendors from all across the country ready to go to make this year even better. This is the second year for the event. Join us now as one of the show's promoters and tell us a little bit more about what is expected here on this very first day of the 2015 show. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, Saturday is our busiest day, so we're expecting the largest crowd. We have the most paneling. Our programming is incredibly packed today. We have all of our celebrity guests, voice actors, and all of our comic book artists here as well. Last year, there was a little bit of a, of a space crunch, to say the least. Yes, we did. Um, it was, since it was our first year, we just were not expecting the crowds. This year, we have made sure um, to be able to accommodate everyone. We have more than three times the amount of space, so we should be able to fit everyone in the exhibit hall. So you've already planned for this year and for extra space. Uh, the different, uh, as we mentioned earlier, different vendors are here. What are some of the celebrities who will be here as well? Well, headlining celebrity is Carrie Fisher, who plays Princess Leia in the Star Wars films. We also have Jenna Coleman from Doctor Who and Rory McCann and Jason Momoa from Game of Thrones. Okay. And lastly, if you're coming down, what, uh, what time does everything begin and how much is the cost? Well, so the panel rooms are going to be opening up at 8.30 because we do have an Indiana Comic Con wedding, the very first one happening here. Um, guests can, are, it's open to the public, guests can arrive at 8.30 and the reception starts at 9. Okay, perfect. All right, and we have more information on our website, WTHR.com, including ticket information, costs, things like that, all on our website. So we'll have much more on this event, including that wedding coming up here later on Sunrise. For now, reporting live, Matt McCutcheon, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. All right, Matt, thank you. How about that, a Comic Con wedding? Wedding. Right. I love how she acted like it wasn't really a big deal or weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, I talked to her yesterday about this. I said the, the wedding party is going to be dressed up, and I think some of the guests as well. So it's definitely an event to remember. Yes. And of course, no one wants rain on their wedding no, day either. No, no, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully it'll be out of here yeah, by, by then. then. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we are seeing it really taper off quite a bit this morning. That's the good news, making way for a much brighter weekend. I'll have the details coming up. And Hoosiers are celebrating St. Patrick's Day this weekend. Coming up where you can find some green beer and Irish fun tonight right here in Indianapolis.
Well, St. Patrick's Day is Tuesday, but Hoosiers celebrating this weekend with several events around Indianapolis. We asked our partners at Nouveau Magazine about some good places to celebrate St. Patty's Day. Some of the best parties going on this weekend for St. Patrick's Day are all happening right down here, downtown, starting with the Cladig, where we are right now. Um, and then there's, there's going to be some great parties at District Tap, uh, Nine Irish Brothers, uh, let's see, the Rathskeller, um, and of course, uh, the kind of king of all the uh, St. Patrick's Day celebrations is going to be at the Golden Ace Inn, uh, the original, kind of the original Irish bar in town. Awesome, Sarah, thank you. And if you're looking for other ways to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, you can participate in the 24th annual Shamrock Run. The four-mile run or walk kicks off this morning at 10 o'clock on Monument Circle. The route runs down to Fountain Square, home of the Irish Hill, then circles back to the finish line. Now you can see right there, participants are encouraged to wear green and come dressed in your best Irish race costume. And the Irish party continues this afternoon on Georgia Street. The Blarney Bash goes from 2 to 10 tonight. Two live bands will take the stage at 3 and 7. There is also food and, of course, green beer. The St. Patrick's Day celebration is free and only open to those 21 and over. So, Kelly Green, you see we have a lot of outdoor events going on mm -hmm. for this uh, St. Patty's Day weekend. Right. And hopefully things are going to dry out. Yes. Uh, you know, we also have the parade, too. Mm -hmm. And last year it was very cold for mm -hmm. the St. Patrick's Day parade. Definitely going to be better. I'll get to that <laughs> forecast in just a moment. But let's focus on this morning. We still have some rain that's moving across the area. And it is definitely tapering off from northwest to southeast. That's some good news because we have had... Anywhere from one and a half to two and a half inches of rain, especially in southern Indiana. So that has become a problem for some possible flooding. Now, right now you can see we still have some steady rain that's moving across the I-70 corridor and I-74 just across Indianapolis. But again, things are tapering off from northwest to southeast. Here's a look at our weather bug network as far as rain totals go since midnight. So this doesn't include yesterday. 41 hundredths of an inch in Shelbyville, 37 hundredths of an inch in Nashville, almost a half an inch in Bloomington and uh, almost six tenths of an inch in Sullivan. So we're still dealing with some very soggy conditions across that area, saturated ground and really doesn't have anywhere to go at this point. It is currently 50 degrees in Indianapolis, 48 in Columbus, 46 in Kokomo, 45 in Crawfordsville and 50 degrees in Greencastle. And uh, we do have a dense fog advisory that's in effect now until nine o'clock this morning for Indianapolis and areas to the northwest. We also have a flood watch that's in effect from Bloomington in Columbus, Greensburg, areas to the south, and that is in effect until 2 o'clock this afternoon. We do expect to see some of that minor flooding in those areas due to the heavy rain that we've had over the past 24 hours. Here's a look at visibility. It's being reduced in many areas, especially where the rain has really tapered off, a quarter of a mile in Rensselaer and in Lafayette. Three quarters of a mile of visibility in Crawfordsville and three quarters as well in Muncie and three quarters of a mile of visibility in Shelbyville. So things are definitely going to diminish before they get better. Uh, a quarter of a mile in Logansport and a quarter of a mile of visibility in Monticello. It is currently 50 degrees right now and winds are out of the west, five miles per hour. So those light breezes really not helping us out with that fog this morning. We also are going to be tracking a much drier afternoon and a nice finish to our weekend. We're also tracking temperatures that will be climbing close to 70 degrees in some locations. And here's a look at our future track 13. It is going to clear us out as we head into the afternoon. So more sunshine on tap, temperatures will climb into the upper 50s this afternoon with breezes out of the northwest and it will be a bit breezy at times from about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Highs today around 60 degrees in Rushville, 59 in Noblesville, 58 in Greencastle and 61 in Nashville. So a pretty comfortable day today as things dry out tomorrow even uh, more beautiful with mostly sunny skies high of 59 degrees. Monday check it out high of 71 degrees a beautiful day and as Carrie is mentioning about St. Patrick's Day it is going to be cooler high of only 46 degrees actually running a few degrees below average and then we will track cooler weather for the rest of the work week and even chances of rain Thursday and Friday. Carrie? All right, Kelly, thank you. Well, Cinderella is a tale that has been around for so long. It actually has its own cliche, especially this time of the year during the NCAA basketball tournament. Any small college team that knocks out a powerhouse is called a Cinderella team. Well, now Disney is releasing a live action version of its classic animated feature. Here's Raphael Seth with the box office preview. 
ragged servant girl. Is what you are, and that is what you will always be. Lily James goes joyriding in a pumpkin in Cinderella. This live action version of the Disney classic tethers James to wicked stepmother Kate Blanchett, who's intent on marrying one of her own daughters into the royal palace. But it's servant girl Cinderella who catches the prince's eye and her stepmother's ire. Cinderella's rated PG. I'm coming after your boy with everything I got. Then I'll let you die. Men kill men like men in Run All Night. Liam Neeson is a retired hitman in trouble with his former boss. That's because he's killed the mafioso's son to protect his own. Now mobster Ed Harris is vowed to take revenge on Neeson's kid, and Neeson will do whatever it takes to shield his next of kin from his mob family. Run All Night is rated R. Ten and a half. That's some big feet there, kid. I'm big boned. Adam Sandler is a soul man in The Cobbler. He provides shoe repair services in a shop owned by his family for generations, but when his equipment fails, he finds an enchanted old stitcher in his basement that gives him the power to become the person whose shoes he's wearing. The Cobbler is rated PG-13. That's the box office preview. Raphael Seth, NBC News. All right, well, next on Sunrise, one man's personal battle. First, he fought in Vietnam, and now he's fighting a life-threatening illness. I can sit down and cry and feel sorry for myself, or I can get busy living. And he is doing just that, fulfilling his bucket list and the unexpected news he just received.
We witnessed a touching story that we want to make sure you see. Like many former soldiers, an Indiana veteran made a vow to return to Vietnam where he fought 47 years ago. However, this time he was on a different mission. Eyewitness News anchor Scott Swan found out about the sense of urgency that he took with him. There was a time when this was his battlefield. Kent Maxfield was 21 when he fought for his country. There's many times that I, I could have died when I was in Vietnam. During the late 60s, the young Indiana soldier had something with him. That was a Bible that I carried over my heart for the entire year that I was in Vietnam. And many nights when the rockets or mortars were coming in, I would sit down in the foxhole and read the 23rd Psalm, which comforted me. Maxfield survived that war. I was actually there during the Tet Offensive. And has the medals from his military service. But now, at the age of 69, this Fisher's resident is in the battle of his life. Yep, here we go. He's undergoing chemotherapy after being diagnosed with terminal cancer. Maxfield decided there were three options of how to spend his final days. I can uh, sit down and die, wait to die. I can sit down and cry and feel sorry for myself, or I can get busy living. I decided to get busy living. So Maxfield got busy, spending time with his three daughters, six grandkids, and two great-grandkids. And he thought about all the things he wanted to do with the time he had left. Uh, I put together a bucket list, and on that bucket list, one of them was to go back to visit Vietnam. A return trip after 47 years. Heal my wounds and to go back to give something back to the people of Vietnam. And, and I kind of feel like this time I went with love in my heart instead of to fight. His trip included visits to orphanages in Vietnam. He gave away $5,000 in scholarships that was raised in Indiana so Vietnamese kids can attend schools. And there was one other thing Maxfield brought with him, that tiny Bible that he carried during the war. <laughs> Maxfield returned home from Vietnam for a second time, this time to a crowd of friends and family. And just today, an unexpected surprise after undergoing new tests at the VA hospital. Just saw the doctor a few minutes ago and she said that you could hardly even find the tumor on my CAT scan, which is better than the last time. It had shrunk the last time, but this time they had to look real hard to even find it, which is absolutely great news for me. It is an answer to prayer for all the people who've been praying for him. Oh, I'm on top of the world right now. It's like they can give me chemo all day if they want to. So we're going to be around a while, so people are going to have to put up with me for a while. <laughs> Maxfield says he's learned something about his battles, both in the hospital and in the battlefield. This is for all my brothers in Vietnam, not me. I want to share this with them. I want to tell them to let go. You know, the people of Vietnam love us. They were treated as great, and it's, you know, let go. I mean, the war is over. Let's, let's start loving each other instead of hating each other. Mm, and Scott says the next thing on Kent Maxfield's bucket list is to attend his granddaughter's wedding, and that takes place just next month. We're going to turn to meteorologist Kelly Green for a final check of our weather in this hour of sunrise. And there's some good news on the horizon. Definitely going to see an improvement. As far as the rain goes, it's going to be out of here likely by late morning into early afternoon from the northwest to the the southeast as it continues to taper off, which is definitely some good news because we've had some heavy rainfall, especially across south central Indiana. In fact, we do have a flood watch that's in effect for a good portion of south central Indiana, a dense fog advisory in effect for Indianapolis and areas to the northwest because we've had uh, visibility is being reduced to less than a quarter of a mile in many locations. Flood warnings in effect for many rivers, so it is definitely going to be uh, a little bit of a soggy start this morning, but things improve today with the high of 57 degrees later on this afternoon, even better tomorrow. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly, and thank you for watching Eyewitness News. You can rejoin us after the Today Show at 8.